The Prime Minister is in Moscow, his first visit to Russia since the Ukraine war began. What is this visit all about? How is that relationship between India and Russia so very important? My colleague Vasudha Venugopal joins us now from Moscow. Vasudha, what is this visit all about? Well, uh, Vishnu, you know this so much better than so many others, but uh, let me tell you that the Prime Minister uh, is expected to leave any time uh, soon. In fact, we are right uh, you know, opposite his hotel and we are told that uh, the Prime Minister could be leaving any time soon for his uh, dinner at, uh, with uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin at his residence. And this is in the Moscow suburb of uh, Novo Ogarevo. And this is a rare and unusual gesture by uh, the President of Russia uh, to, uh, to honour the Prime Minister of India with, with, with this uh, uh, with this gesture, but uh, clearly there are there are many po political and diplomatic undertones to this meeting. Like you rightly said, this is uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's first bilateral visit after he assumed charge as the Prime Minister of India for the third time. This is also his first visit as uh, uh, after uh, the Ukraine-Russia war broke out. And uh, we were speaking to some MEA sources and they said that this is the first bilateral meeting between the two leaders happening after a gap of three years. In fact, the last time they met this properly was in 20. 21. And in fact, in the course of the next 24 hours, Vishnu, both these leaders could be coming face to face. They could be having bilateral meetings at least three times, which is why there are four important uh, uh, sectors that are on agenda here. One is, of course, trade. Uh, the second is energy. Third is defense ties. And fourth and most important thing is also that uh, India will be pressing for the early release of uh, several Indians who are believed to have uh, been misled into fighting on the front lines of the Russia-Ukraine war. In fact, uh, officials saw are saying that there could be around 30 to 50 people. Ten of them have already come back because of government efforts and four of them unfortunately have died. But uh, this is something that has been raised at all levels by uh, Indian officials. And tomorrow the Prime Minister will also be addressing a community meeting. Today is the dinner and tomorrow, uh, of course, uh, the restricted level talks, high, uh, high level uh, delegation talks will take place. And of course, the community event in which he will address about 600 people of Indian origin who have been residing in Russia for uh, many years now. He's also expected to address uh, uh, a speech there and also he would be visiting the Atom exhibition with uh, President Putin. So clearly around 3.30 is when we expect the closing presser to happen, which is when we know what the final outcomes of this meeting, meeting are. But clearly many political and diplomatic undertones to this because there has been several political realignment in this country. The SEO conference just took place three, four days ago in Kazakhstan where uh, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin actually said that this is the best time for Russia China friendship. India, on the other hand, is also looking at deepening its ties with uh, partners like USA. It has also diversified its uh, defense procurement. So clearly, uh, Russia and India coming together again is a reiteration of the long, long-lasting, steady ties between the two countries that have existed, uh, you know, for over 75 years. But at the same time, this is India playing the balancing act with a lot of tact. Okay, Azidia Kondratieva, journalist. Uh from Moscow, senior journalist joins us as well. Senior, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, what are Russia's expectations of this visit of Prime Minister Modi? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I think the visit is um, very crucial. Uh, a lot has been talked about uh, India, India's growth, India's story, India's uh, foreign policy and balancing act in Russia, which was never the case uh, before. I would say the understanding of India and the importance of India, um, how important it is for Russia, uh, uh, has increased a lot um, in the past year since uh, the two leaders met um, in New Delhi in 2021 and even in summer card in 2022. So um, I think, um, see, it's not the, the bilateral meetings is not about uh, expectations. It's about the ability of uh, leaders to uh, talk frankly, and I'm sure that would be a frank talk because uh, both uh, countries have no doubts at where their relationships stand. Um, there has been unprecedented surge in trade and energy cooperation that we have seen in the past two years. Uh, there have been uh, some challenges. Again, a lot of those challenges um, are not something that Russia and India uh, per second uh, change because these are Western sanctions that uh, impact the relationship. And of course, there is a geopolitical aspect that uh, you discuss on your shows uh, in, in a great detail. Uh, but I think understanding where uh, 
the relationship are going ahead and how they are going ahead given the geopolitical um, situation, I think that is what is important. Uh, Ambassador Shashank, former Foreign Secretary of India, you know, it is a bit of a difficult equation that India has um, or finds itself in. On the one hand, we are very close with Russia. On the other hand, Russia is very close with China. We have lots of problems with China. In as much as we import weaponry from Russia, China imports weaponry from Russia as well. Uh, and therefore, from a geostrategic standpoint, isn't India's relationship with uh, Russia somewhat problematic in these areas which I mentioned? Well, Vishnu, earlier we were looking at the Russian relationship with reference to our defense preparedness. And Russia had always been a time-tested friend with India. Lately, we had also been trying to improve our relations with the West. And a lot of measures had been taken. But somehow we find that, you know, ever since the trouble over Ukraine started, ever since the Houthis started attacking the uh, international ship shipping routes, uh, we find that the whole scenario has changed. And unless India takes a more uh, balanced, more multi-aligned kind of position with reference to our relations with Russia, we will not be able to either take care of our uh, own interests vis-a-vis -vis China or Pakistan, or we will not be able to take care of the interests of this region as a whole and of the world peace. And I think India has a special role just now to play where we find that the Americans want to befriend India, but they're not able to give us the highest level of defense equipment because they have some uh, hitches there. Secondly, because of their own democratic framework, they're not able to take action against the people who are trying to destabilize India, whether Khalistanis, whether the Islamic terrorists who are being promoted by Pakistan. So therefore, once again, we have to come back to our relationship with Russia. And I think that this is in this new term of a Prime Minister Modi that he has seen that people in India are extremely keen that this relationship with Russia should be carried forward. It's not just energy security, it's energy security plus so many other trade relationships. In fact, I would even say that one weakness with the Russian relationship had always been that people to people ties were not that very strong. So this time we will have to strengthen the people to people a level. To All right, let me just interrupt you for half a second. We've got images over there of the uh, of the motorcade of Prime Minister Modi. Uh, Prime Minister Modi on his way to meet meeting Russia's Vladimir Putin at his residence is what we are told. Uh, so that motorcade now on its way. Can we go across to Vasudha for a for a moment? All right, we've just lost the line with her. But these images live from Moscow at the stage that motorcade of Prime Minister Narendra Modi on his way now for dinner uh, at the residence of the Russian uh, President Vladimir uh, Putin. We've got a, a few more images over there of uh, Prime Minister Modi getting into his vehicle. He seems to have gotten on and uh, it would shortly thereafter be on his way. So this is all coming in from uh, Moscow at this stage. Um, I just wanted to quickly go across to uh, uh, Oleksiy Goncharenko, the Ukrainian MP. Thank you very much, Mr. Goncharenko, for being with us. I'm just trying to understand, you see India and Prime Minister Modi having a potential role in convincing the Russian leadership that it's time for a peace, uh, for, for peace in Europe between Russia and Ukraine. First of all, today Russia attacked uh, the biggest uh, children's hospital, one of the biggest children's hospitals in the world in Kiev, with the ballistic missiles, uh, killing uh, small children even during operations, which we may have just, I, I don't want this to happen with any country, but just imagine that, um, I hope this will never happen with India. But imagine somebody is attacking in India children's hospital. At the same time, Ukrainian leader is coming to the leader of the country, which is really a terrorist state. Russia is a terrorist state and committing genocide against Ukrainians. It's very painful for us. And uh, I understand that India has its interest. I realize that India has what to discuss with Russia. But it's painful for us to see Putin as a war criminal. Uh, he, there is a warrant against him issued by International Criminal Court for what he did. And uh, that's the first what I want to tell you, and I, because I want to be frank with you. Secondly, definitely, 
uh, we want peace. But it doesn't look like Russia really wants peace in there attacking children hospitals with missiles. And today, there was one of the biggest attacks in Ukraine from the beginning of full-scale invasion. And again, uh, more than 30 civilians killed, including children and doctors, and uh, more than 100 uh, wounded. And uh, it doesn't look like a peace struggle. I think Putin does not want peace. And I think India should be very concerned about Russian-Chinese ties, because I think all these uh, axes of chaos, Russia, Iran, North Korea, all of these axes exist just because China is standing behind them. And I, I don't think it's in the best interests of India uh, to, to these, these axes of chaos can cause a lot of problems for India too. So I think it's more important for India and more interesting as the biggest democracy in the world to, to be in democratic world, to develop cooperation there, and okay. uh, not to be aligned with the countries like these which I mentioned. Okay. Ambassador Yogendra Kumar, um, you know, you were listening over there to um, Mr. Goncharenko, you know, expressing a Ukrainian concern. Prime Minister Modi has said that this is not a time for war. But frankly, beyond that, um, it's not, there's, there, there hasn't been any perceptible change in Russia's sort of attitude towards this war, despite, you know, efforts to, to a small extent by India. Do you believe that ultimately India can actually have a role, or do you believe that India just doesn't have the ability uh, to change the course or, or to push the peace process forward? Well, the first point, of course, is that uh, what uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament from Ukraine has said, I think all countries have a relationship with Russia as well as with Ukraine. And every country has certain equities in that relationship. Now, how the other countries are describing their relationship is a matter which, uh, I mean, I think is very difficult to comment upon because everybody has a strong view on a situation as grave as the Ukraine conflict is. So I would only say one thing that, uh, and, and I say with all about respect to all countries. I mean, the, the external affairs ministers talked about that great length. So there's no need to repeat that. Now, the question actually is that different countries are trying their best to see in what, in what manner they can see that this process goes forward. Now, how it's done that, of course, it depends upon the status of conflict, the nature of relationship between Ukraine and Russia and the other countries involved in that. But I would actually still say that the attempts were made by Ukraine at one time to actually develop or find some resolution to the conflict. And we've seen some, you know, leaked documents and all that which has come out in New York Times and Washington and, and, and foreign affairs and so on and so forth. So the point still is, I mean, of course, there was a meeting in, in Austria, but in that meeting, which was supposed to be a peace conference, Russia was not invited. And our delegation took the position that while we have a lot of things uh, on which we can, I mean, convergent position and a lot of issues are raised there. But you cannot have a peace conference without the parties concerned actually being involved and being present there. So what I'm trying to say is that different countries are involved in that. We've heard about Turkey. We also knew recently the Hungarian president, who is now the head of the European Union. He had gone to Russia. And, and even Austria has been trying, it's good off to say, the UN Secretary General has been trying. In fact, it was in Switzerland uh, where this peace trying. conference was held. And Ambassador, as I understand it, in, and in speaking that. to the Swiss government, there were efforts which were made to reach out to Russia. Russia chose not to attend. But be that as it may, let me just go across to Fred Weir, who also joins us. Fred, the energy relationship which India now enjoys with Russia, it's at one level deeply problematic to a country such as Ukraine, but for India, it's always been, you know, national priorities first. We have a very large population. In terms of the relationship between Russia and India, how important is energy security? Well, I think it's tremendously important. In fact, it's, it's shifting global supply chains, uh, probably permanently. This uh, surge in uh, coal and oil uh, imports to India uh, has has replaced uh, Russia's trade with other parts of the world uh, in this in this wartime environment, and it's also led to a huge uh, disparity in in the trade balance 
uh, I think, $65 billion trade turnover, but most of that is Russian profit from its energy exports to India. Uh, so what I'm sure is at the top of the agenda here in this meeting is for them to talk about ways that uh, Russian companies can use those huge rupee bank accounts that they've built up, uh, you know, to, to get their their profits out because there are restrictions and nobody can use dollars or euros in the sanctions environment. So there have to be innovative new ways. And some of them, I think uh, it's an opportunity for India to get Russia to invest in Indian companies, Indian projects, spend that money in India, and also to buy more Indian goods because uh, India is a big producer of consumer goods, uh, of really high quality stuff uh, and and Russia could could stand to since it has to replace a lot of things that he it had been importing from Western countries could definitely uh, you know there's there's a lot of potential there just on that economic front not only for everybody to benefit but for permanent new ties to be forged right all right well I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us I'm just going to quickly Remind our viewers of what we are seeing uh, right now. Uh, President uh, Putin uh, is uh, likely to be having dinner with uh, Prime Minister Modi in just a little while from now. Prime Minister Modi arrived in uh, Russia earlier on today, a very important meeting. It's his first visit to, U to Russia uh, since the time of the Ukraine war starting. Um, there is an important trade relationship over there, a military relationship, a defense relationship, and certainly an energy relationship. And all of these issues will be addressed by the Prime Minister uh, once he is over there.